So first of all, bro, I wanted to ask you, because I've known you for a long time, probably since I was a fucking 10-year-old. Shit, probably. So when did you uh, even start making, like, music, bro? Because, you know, we we were all just kids at one point. So I, when did it turn into something you were like, I'm doing this? Like, well, yeah, I mean, like, shit, when we were growing up, I mean, we've all always, like, been in the music like crazy. For sure. Like, I remember seeing you with Gil and I'd be like, yo, listen to this fucking Meek Mill song. Or, <laughs> listen right. to this fucking Wale song, like, all that shit. And, uh, I mean, I've always wrote, like, I mean, I was writing, you know, seventh, eighth grade. I was writing some bullshit. Right, but, right. you know, it was always cool to just write and rap some shit. I remember me and fucking Derek Vice made a rap song about Timmy Poner or some dumb shit. Got suspended for it. <laughs> and, uh, well, anyways, I mean, when I moved to Illinois... That's really when I like started making beats. Right. Like, I bought a computer. I was just fucking around on FL Studio making beats. Um, and was sending them to everybody. I mean, I sent right. them to Quentin. I sent them to random people. Like nobody will hop on my shit. Right. So I said, "Fuck it," and bought a mic, <laughs> bought some better headphones, and started recording. Bro, and just learned the process from that. Um, and I was rapping to all my own beats at, at first. I'd make a beat right to it, rap to it, mix it. I was doing the whole fucking nine by myself. Right. Like 100%. I was just watching YouTube videos, sitting in my room, learning mixing strategies, you know, watching drum patterns, watching hi-hat patterns, like everything, just to try to perfect some shit. Bro, like, you was, you were a huge fucking, like, you were one of the first, you were a trailblazer in terms of, like, making music, you know what I'm saying? You and Quentin were the first people out. Because obviously, like you said, bro, we was always talking about music, but I never always. realized you could just <laughs> buy some shit and just That's make what I'm it. Saying. I didn't realize you could just actually take it in your own hands. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, what made it easy for me is like to see another artist doing that type of shit. Like, you got to realize how many artists be on tour and be staying in hotel rooms and Airbnbs, and all they have is a fucking MacBook and a right, mic, right. and they're making bangers. Bro. Right, right. Like, I'm talking like shit. people are making fucking number one hits in a hotel room. Right. Like, they're not at some fancy ass studio paying somebody $1,500 to make a song. And then that mixer wants part of your fucking money. Right. Like, oh, you, know never, like, you never know what you got to give up. No. Nah, instead of just, oh shit, I'm on tour. Probably about to make 50K for the show. Let's make another fucking banger in the hotel room when we get back. Like, it makes everything easier, bro. It's easy and it's not easy at the same time. I mean, it's right. just a process. Right, definitely. But it's like, well, shit, I mean, if they doing it like that. It's a learning thing, bro. Like, Oh, it's a crazy learning curve, too. Right. There's so much involved in it. Like, I mean, making beats is its own art. Right. Rapping is its own art. You have right. so many different types of things you got to learn when you're rapping. You got to have cadence. You got to have, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Bars, timing. You yeah, I mean, bars, timing. Uh, delivery is right, fucking right. huge. Flow, how to fucking breathe while you're fucking spitting, right. like just different shit. And uh, I mean, just seeing, I mean, the artists that influenced me, I like a lot of artists that are either versatile. I mean, they either produce, mix, master, engineer, do all their own fucking shit because it's like that's the best way to do it, bro. If you're gonna right. make music, just do it all. Like, that's just one of the things that's crazy, too, bro. It's like you do all these things and you look up a year later and you realize how much shit you've learned. You're like, holy shit, bro. Like, if I listen to my very first song recorded right now <laughs> <laughs> and then listen to like the the song that I put out, like the, the amount of growth in such a short time is insane. It's nuts, bro. Like, I mean, when, whenever I showed Anthony my music, he was expecting to be like, oh, you know, yeah, it's pretty good. Like something you would say to somebody. Right when they know it's not good and they're trying to be nice and not shut me down. And then when he comes over and he's like, yo, that shit was fucking hard. Some, some sincerity in there. You know what I mean? And then I showed him my first song and he was like, now that's the type of shit I walk up to you and say, you know, it's pretty good. Like, you know what I mean? Like the quality got better. The bars was better. The beats were better. Like, I mean, it's, it's practice, bro. Like you, you're going to get better or something. The more consistent you do it. I mean, it's just life. Right. Right. Everything you do, if you put the time into it and you're dedicated to it and you got a fucking, I mean, you got ambition, you're dedicated and you focus on yourself, bro. That's what there's I, no ceiling. I heard Nipsey say there's nothing stronger than like a concentrated willpower. You know nothing, what I'm saying? Like it's nothing. crazy how much you can just. And that's just a life. 
It's, oh, you know what I mean? That's just, it sounds cliche, but it really is <laughs> like that. Like you can just take one step one day, and you a year later you're like thirty steps down the road. And it's Bro, like, I'm saying, and you look back like, damn, like, like when I look back when I was sitting in Illinois making these trash ass beats, spitting these fucking whack ass fucking bars, <laughs> but in the in the time that I'm making it, I'm thinking it's the hottest thing in the world. You know right, what I right. mean? And then I put it out, and I'm all hype about it. Like I didn't give a, I never gave a fuck about what people really think of my music. Because they're not the ones making it. They're not my critic. Like, my biggest critic is myself. Right. And there's only growth when you start something. And that's what's crazy. You know what's crazy, too, is a lot of times it's your your audience is elsewhere. It ain't. Oh, 100%. You know what I'm saying? Like, you'll find your audience somewhere else. 100%, bro. So it's crazy. It's like almost uh, people, it's like they, they they know you too well or something to to. They just think you're goofy for trying to do something outside that's of the norm. For sure. Yeah, definitely 100%. a piece of that for sure. Hundred fucking percent. You know how many times I've definitely heard this or that, or always trying to make music. He think he a fucking rapper. He think he doing all this and that. I'm like, bro, this is just a hobby. And that, that's what I don't get. It's a it's creative like, hobby, exactly. Like, but on the same time, I mean, I don't want to like shit on nobody, but I guarantee I'm making more money than them. Right. So it's like if I got a full time job and I'm doing this on the side, why the fuck are you hate? Right. Like, and that's what, what's crazy nowadays is people act out on social media like on instagram or snapchat but they they won't put themselves out there in a format like this where it actually kind of makes sense to like people who are like us making beats and making independent shit happen they're looking for information like this or perspectives like this you know what i'm saying yeah so yeah it's like on apple music i mean you can look at like the cities that are listening to your shit definitely i mean i got people in like my most plays are in like fucking detroit (laughs) you know what i mean like i got my most plays in detroit i might have like 10 or 15 plays a week in Cincinnati, and it's probably my homies playing my shit. Right. You know what I mean? I ain't never seen anybody around here that we know or went to school with other than my close people, like, actually share my shit. Right. Or actually reach out and say this or that. Like, right. I get a lot of uh, flack, like you said, just about just from people we know about the things we do, putting ourselves out there, even, like, the shirts, yeah, the podcast, the uh, – the music, bro, is all things that I was like, bro, these are like, what's, why would you not do it? Like, you know what I'm saying? If you feel like you can do it, just try it. Even the podcast for me is like a super uncomfortable thing, bro, because I don't want it to be like some kind of interview thing. I'd rather it just be a conversation, you know what I'm saying, that we'd have anyway. Yeah. And it, you make, you can make money from it. And not yeah. even just that, people could actually learn from shit, shit you're talking about. It's just a perspective, bro. And like, that's all it is. people are just silent haters, bro. But that's cool. Uh, everybody plays their yeah, role. It is what you it know, is. you know, it's part of the process, right? What's nuts is uh, a lot of two which like pushed me to do a lot of shit is uh, Russ, bro. And you was one of the first dudes that I, I got y'all. Y'all showed me Russ. I never heard of Russ <laughs> before you and Alex and Quentin. Y'all yeah. listening to that shit? Hell yeah! And that's a huge thing too, bro. <laughs> it's like just the way he talks, bro, and like how yep. he'll, he'll make beats online. He'll fucking oh, yeah. tell you. He'll show you the game. He's transparent with the game. Oh so yeah, it's, it's super helpful for somebody. It made me realize, holy shit, because he came from our spot. He's exactly. straight independent. Exactly. It's wild. He's, he's been making his own beats. I looked up, so I found his old YouTube channel and was yeah. listening to some of the beats he was making on GarageBand. No shit. Hell yeah. See? And it, I mean, it was decent. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was some starter out beats. Right. And I was like, damn, I was kind of making the same kind of beats. Right. And then now, the songs that he's putting up, Wife You Up, Banger, probably fucking double platinum. He produced, Mix Master, Engineer. You know what I'm saying? He dropped 11 fucking albums right. before right. he even made it into the game, right. bro. And that's just being consistent, persistent, and having the will to fucking succeed, bro. That's all it takes, like. It is it is hard though, you know what I'm saying? 100%. It does take some like reassurance, oh, yeah. like you know. What oh mean? yeah. I mean I've been probably making music five years now. Bro, the well, thing that I realized when I I was going through your shit a while back, like when I first was put on your shit. I only had my shit on SoundCloud. I used to have a lot more shit on my SoundCloud. Did and I you? said fucking I'm gonna start throwing this shit on Apple Music. Right. <laughs> and Spotify. It's everywhere now. But it's only songs that like I really fuck with. I mean, I had like I was showing Anthony, bro. I got like so much shit in my Google Drive that I just haven't put out because it's that's what's hard about the process is like you know you can write a song and you think it's hard, but then when you right. go to record it, you just don't fuck with how it sounds, yeah, yeah. and that's why it's tough. But like then you got people like Russ who I've watched a million interviews, and he's like, bro, put he always says he's like 
Let's put that shit out. Just put it out. Just put it the fuck out. Right. Just drop the shit. Like you don't know. You might have one person that likes it. Okay, cool. You got one fan now. Like you know what I mean from a different area or something. And that's you never know up. who's listening to your shit. And that's what's crazy about like you said, SoundCloud too, bro. Like I, you have fucking listeners all across the world. Yeah, hundred percent. So it's like, it's insane when you really even think about it. Like. You have literal, literal listen, listeners in Indonesia and all that crazy <laughs> shit. Places That's you what never I'm saying. Go. I'm about to pull up my uh, my Apple Music because it'll give me a breakdown of where right. people are listening to my shit. And I guarantee the top cities are nowhere near Cincinnati. Nowhere near. Bro, what I, what I just, the reason I feel like the uh, just put it out theory is just makes sense is because. I just feel like there's a piece of you and all the shit you make. You might not even see it. Like, you know what I'm saying? You might not. And, I mean, you brought that it. to life to me on one of my songs. I can't remember which one it was. Um, but you said, you know, like a different set of ears is what makes the difference. Because if I put something out and I think it's whack, you know, and then someone else listens to it and they're like, damn, this shit's hard. Like, right. And that's a that's a reassurance thing. It's crazy. You know how, what I mean? It's crazy how your brain is like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like... <laughs> You really do need like little kid reassurance almost. It's kind of the same, bro, because it's like it's not it's not an easy thing to do. And like if you focus too much on the results and like if people are gonna fuck with it or if this song's gonna get enough plays or if I post it on Instagram, is this song gonna get likes? Right. Like you're focusing on the wrong shit. Like when you get te- when you get too involved in results and those type of reassurances, it's going to create fear. It's going to create anxiety, like this and that. And I mean, I've had waves of that hundred percent. I mean, I kind of had a wave of that at like the beginning of the year where I wasn't even making music. Like I'd record and I'm like, bro, this shit sounds like dog shit. Like if I post a sub, is anybody going to listen to it? Right. And like, now I'm just like, fuck it, bro. Like that's why I almost wish uh, we didn't wear so many hats, bro, because it's hard to be the creator and the <laughs> marketer. You know what I'm saying? It's hard, to, dude. it's hard to have that objective opinion, bro. You almost need somebody there like, yeah, this is good. This is bad. And that's why it helps, though, like with, with this shit. Like I'm looking at my, so I guess my my best song statistically is Everybody Know. Right. I recorded that song on top of a mini fridge. <laughs> no shit. And the top cities. Cincinnati, Philadelphia, Columbus, Chicago, Dayton, Ohio. Um, it's been Shazam. I guess Shazam is that thing where you like. So yeah. It tells you like what songs playing. For sure. Canada, Turkey, the fuck, United Arab Emirates, whatever the fuck. That's that Dubai. Is. That's what I'm saying, yeah. bro. Like Istanbul, Toronto. Like you know <laughs> what I mean? Like. Yeah, it's, it's there's true. so many different it's people crazy. that have listened to this shit. So it's like I got to get out of this small-minded world and city that i'm around and realize like there's people that can hear my music right anywhere it's insane everywhere and who knows who that person could be you get one person to listen to that motherfucking song and they fuck with that shit and next thing you know they're a dj or they're artists or they're friends with a big name artist and it pops off bro and you can be big in japan that's what i'm saying you know what i'm saying like you can have a song nobody here even fucks with and it's just huge in Japan. Or I know some that shit. that one song that did a bunch of numbers that fucking stupid ass uh, Gundam style or whatever. Yeah. Oh, boom, 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 yeah. Boom, whatever that shit is. Or that's like one of the. I know the dude's Korean or Chinese right. or whatever he is, but that's one of the biggest like club hits over there. Right. I mean, it did numbers in the United States, but like yeah. over there, right. oh, raps. You know, it's crazy. He was, he was, he put out multiple projects before that. That dude had like multiple projects out and he was never, I never heard of it until that song. (laughs) But even like, what's crazy, bro, is I wish, do you, what do you think about SoundCloud and monetization on there, bro? Like SoundCloud Pro, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, where you can, I mean, I think it's definitely the next step for SoundCloud, bro. I mean, they've been a, a streaming site for how long now? And you got big name artists that came from SoundCloud. I mean, Lil Yachty was making, Songs in his dorm room, eating ramen noodles. Right. Started dropping on SoundCloud. Got hot on SoundCloud. Got a fucking record deal. Russ was dropping a song every single Friday for God knows who long. And guess what? He went from SoundCloud, got his fame off SoundCloud, started doing shows, started getting more fans. Right. Put that shit on Apple Music and really started making some music from streaming. Um, I mean, I think SoundCloud is like 
I look at it as like like a step. Like you know what I mean? Like a lot of artists that are first coming out, like all oh, is free. I can put music out there. Obviously, it can get copyrighted if you ain't right. on your shit. But it's, I mean, it's got to have multi-million users, bro. Like, right. It's just like people on, like people on TikTok now. Right. You got people on TikTok making videos and making hits. Next thing you know, it's booming on Apple Music. Yeah. Same thing with SoundCloud. There's, I guarantee, if I like took the time and like went through SoundCloud and like listened to just various artists, I would find at least one artist that makes really good fucking music. Yeah, you definitely would. You know what I mean? Like, definitely. so I think it's just a stepping stone for people. And now that SoundCloud's allowing monetization and shit, right? I mean, it it could be one of the main fucking streaming sites. If people are making money off of it, they're going to want to put their music on there. Bro, listen. What I, my argument is, it really is like one of the. It's a contender in the in the space now. It's like t- TuneCore. Hundred percent. It's too. It's like TuneCore, bro. And it also, I don't. I'm not as familiar well, with TuneCore. They, well, SoundCloud, can they? Uh, do they upload to like other streaming sites, or is it just strictly monetization on SoundCloud? Nah, it distributes to every platform. No bro. way. Every platform. Damn. And that's what's crazy, bro. Is I get plays in other countries that I get paid for. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you do it on know. SoundCloud? Yeah. Oh shit! I've, I've used DistroKid now. Bro, SoundCloud. I don't know what. I how much? Know. How much is the SoundCloud? It's Sixteen one? bucks a month. Okay. That offers a lot, bro. You know what I mean? And look, here's a new thing I just I just came across. They got a like a beta version of this of the repost website where oh shit, like so they you do get a publishing. Promotions too. You get a publishing, and you can, yeah, they do promotion as well. But you can get a publishing deal. Hey man. And if you got the numbers, bro, that's all oh, that really matters. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and you do got thousands of plays. That's what I, I seen one of your songs. I was like, bro, is he getting the money off of this, bro? Nah, I ain't got. Like, it was weird, bro. I've gotten, like, so I was using TuneCore for a while. The reason I switched from TuneCore to DistroKid uh, was just based off the fact, like, TuneCore was $10 a single, no matter right. what. Like, it's crazy. $10 a single. Uh, but DistroKid, you pay 20 bucks a year, and right. you get unlimited uploads. Right. But when I was using TuneCore, I like TuneCore a lot though because, um, I mean, I I learned TuneCore through Russ. He was talking right. about, hey, this is what I used. You can make a million dollars off of music with TuneCore, and he right. did. He made a million dollars with TuneCore, which is crazy. But there was this one song that I dropped, bro, and I don't understand how. But like, I checked my TuneCore one time, and I had like one hundred and seventy dollars in my thing, and I was like, where the fuck is this from? Damn. And I clicked on my disc- uh, discography or whatever it was. And it said my song "You Wasn't There" had like eighty-seven thousand views on YouTube. What? Yes, that's why. But I couldn't find the views on YouTube. Really? I, I looked at the song on YouTube, really? and I couldn't find it. I didn't know if it was uploaded by a different person. Well, that's that's what I mean in terms of like I got fucking paid for it. <laughs> that's what I mean in terms of monetizing loops because if somebody else mon- like I look, bro. I have loops monetized on YouTube, and, I, and you get like loops that you made. Well, it's like I've used Looperman loops, and it says active claims here. Like this one has five active claims. Oh shit! And this is twelve hundred <laughs> views. Oh shit! And it used the same loop that I used in this beat. No chance. So I just get paid for that because <laughs> I monetized it first. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which is kind of fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So that's like everyone, a fucking game out here. Bro. It's, it really is like that. It's crazy. And so like in my royalties, that's why I started making my own melodies because I was like, bro, like I, it just feels weird. You know what I'm saying? Like hell yeah, everyone it's like an uncomfortable you. family. Yeah, like you, they gotta pay you. I feel like a fucking like I'm in the mafia or something. Like, break me off, dog. But either way, bro, like I, I just I know you you was you took your shit serious. So when I was like. When I realize you can, you can legit make money off of this, bro. Oh, hundred like, percent. It's fucking crazy. I mean, I got paid ninety dollars last night for doing a twenty-minute set. No shit. Yeah, I sold eighteen tickets. That's two hundred fifty-five dollars. He was like handing me ninety bucks back. That's awesome. I performed for twenty minutes, bro. That's awesome. You know what I mean, like. And that's what's crazy about creativity, bro. It's so much more rewarding. You know what like I mean. Twenty minutes of digging the hole was just and it was nine. fun as fuck too yes, you know yes. what I mean like I had a good ass show it was good and it was my birthday yeah, right, all my right. people was there like it was cool and I got paid 90 dollars to do it like you can't beat that no and it's it's all started because I wanted to fucking make music 
Right. And I've performed literally probably 15, 20 times. Right. And have gotten paid every single fucking time. That's tight. That's tight. It's just one of the things, bro. It's like there's an actual market for this shit. Hell yeah. It's crazy. To and the market is fucking huge. No matter if you're an engineer, you're a producer. Yeah, you might not get as much credit as the artist. Cool. I don't give a fuck. Bro, right. if I make a beat from Drake, I'm going to be happy as fuck if I right. make a beat for Drake. Yeah, Drake's going to get most of the recognition. But cool. Guess what? I made the motherfucking beat. I'm getting fucking paid. Right. Cool with that. And you can still make your own music. don't give a fuck music. about recognition. You can still make your own music, for it, right? And you'll get a little bit of clout off that. Hell so yeah. you'll get some kind of traffic. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It'll still but it'll trickle down. And I think that's a, that's why a lot of people are scared to be creative, bro. Like, I, it, it was like that for me, though, bro. It was a huge thing. I thought about it for at least a month. Actually, like, put myself out. He was out. always hitting me up. You know what I mean? Shit. Like, I was... I was I've had a lot of people. I've had a lot of people always hit me up about some like different shit. Like they're always like, "Yeah, I'm thinking of my start my own podcast, not you." Um, and I would always say, "I'm like, do it, do it, right? Do it, bro." Like you know what I mean? Like if you if you have the thought of you want to do something, whether it's creative or not, like just do it. Like right. you don't know the outcome. Right. You can't predict the outcome. It could work out way better than you. think. You know what could. I mean? And like. You're going to learn a lot of shit during that type of process. Like, not even, like, shit towards, like, doing a podcast or making music. Like, you're going to learn a lot by yourself, bro. Like, yeah. you're going to unlock some hidden talents. Like, damn, like, I didn't know I could do this type of shit. Right. You know? Like, if I spit a fucking hot-ass verse, I'm like, damn, bro, where the fuck that shit like, come from? Yeah, you're like, how did I even just do that? That's you know what I mean? Like- and it, it might be a verse that I wrote in 15 fucking minutes. <laughs> right. Because... That's just how creators are, bro. Like, when you get that spark of a fucking creation, uh, like, you got to fucking make that shit. You're tapped in. Tapped into the fucking moment. Like, when I wrote Ask Again, bro, I was writing that shit when I was at work at my desk. And I went home on lunch break, and I spit the entire fucking song in one take. And that's my favorite <laughs> fucking song to this day. Not even because it's hard as fuck. It's because of the process that I did it. I was right, sitting at work. Right. I finished my verse. I was like, fuck this. Took my lunch break at, like, 1130, came home, recorded the bitch in one take. And before I mixed it, I was like, oh, yeah. Fire. That's what I feel like. It's almost like uh, I feel like I'm almost meant like that's a like an effort and reward balance. You know what I'm saying? I feel like at it's work, a push and pull, bro. I feel like though at work I don't get that reward no. or something. You know what I'm saying? So it's just all effort and it just feels exhausting. It's like a one sided relationship or something. Yeah. So when it comes to creating, bro, you can do whatever the fuck you want, and you can just do it in your room. You don't have to ask <laughs> nobody. Like I've, I've been to like two studios in my life. It's crazy. One of them was up in Ohio, and they were cool. Like I fuck with all of them as like people, but like it just wasn't my scene, bro. Like, right. right. I don't feel like I, it feels forced. Like when yeah. I'm at a studio, like if I ain't got some shit written, like I feel forced. Like, I gotta come prepared. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. But if I'm sitting in my apartment, bro, and I want to eat some popcorn, or I want to fucking make a sandwich and come back to making this beat, I'm gonna go fucking do that. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I can record at my leisure. I can mix at my own pace. Like, I can do everything I want. Sitting in the comfort of my fucking apartment, and I'd be chilling, straight chilling, making music. It was cool, and and that's what I like about it. Cause like, I, there's no pressure, right? You know what I mean? There's zero pressure. There's zero people judging me, right? There's zero people telling me this sounds like ass. This right. sounds hot. I mean, that's cool to have you know friends over and they might give you some advice on some shit and really cook some shit up. For sure. Like we could definitely cook some shit up, but. It's just, it's free, bro. You right. know what I mean? Like, it's a free feeling. Like, just being able to do this type of shit at your own time and own leisure. Uh, what's crazy, too, is this is the first time in, like, human history, bro, where you can, like, get rich in your bedroom. Like, you ain't ever got to leave. All you need is a motherfucking phone. Like, the internet. My great-grandpa would be pissed if I wasn't on this. You know what I mean? Like, he'd be fucking upset. And There's I, so much money to be made. Like, it's just nuts, bro, that. In the creator market, bro. What's crazy is it, why do you think it's so rewarding? Is it just because a lot of people won't do it? You know what I'm saying? Like, why is it so, why do you think people get paid so much to be fucking artists? I mean, what I'd have to say is like, because you're, you're catching the nations, like, they're just catching their eyes, but they're catching their awareness. They're like, damn, like they, they don't see the behind the scenes shit right. with these artists, bro. Like I'm talking more of the independent style artist. I mean, if you're in a record label, like, you know, 
they're gonna front you some money, like they're gonna do this and that. Like if you're an independent artist, it's gonna be so more rewarding right. based off the fact that like where you started and what you was doing to get you in the position you were in now. Right. Um, and a lot of your fans and a lot of these people aren't gonna see the behind the scenes shit. So it's rewarding and the effort you put in, the time you put in, the shit you learned, like from starting on one song or one podcast or whatever the fuck you're doing and you it didn't sound that good it sounded like ass but you thought it was the hottest shit in the world to you making double platinum records doing this right. doing that it's not only rewarding for the money you're making it's rewarding for yourself right. it's reassuring you you fucking did it you made it like right. but it's also rewarding to the money fact is you owe nobody royalties right you have organic fans you have real people fucking with your shit, and that's the type of shit that's gonna last. And it's a small market. Right. There's only there's like a niche yeah. of like people who are for real dedicated. Cause I mean, you got, I mean, how many people are making music in the world right now? Too many to count. Too fucking many to count. But how many are actually dedicated to their craft? Dedicated to investing right. in their dream that's a huge part about it too right like i mean it don't have to always be money but if like you're investing your time into the shit, like that's number one i always say times over money 100 percent. yeah you gotta you gotta learn that though you know because like at first you and it's it's hard to realize that. working full time yeah definitely you know what i mean trying to be social with your friends like it's doing this and that on top of like trying to put some time and that's where i've I still don't have the balance for that. Well, like, yeah, that's, that's, like, that's well, my biggest problem is time balance right now because I got a fucking full time job. I'm in a fucking sales job, right. sales slash customer service. Like a lot of my time, you know, I might get a call at 5 p.m. My customer's asking where my truck's at. Like, no shit. So I got that on the back of my mind on top of, you know, all my friends trying to hang out with them, trying to see them do this and that. So being creative can get tough, 100%. It is. It's one of the things. It's, it's just weird, bro. It's like, but the people that are consistent and persistent are the ones that make it, and the rewards are literally endless, bro. Now Fucking realize, endless. You don't have to go platinum to live off your creativity. Hell no. You can have, like, a little I niche mean, market, man, a little audience that supports you, and it's like you live off of that. 100%. I mean, I made $150, $170 off of 80,000 views, and I don't know where the fuck came from. But that's, that's just streams. Can you imagine if, let's say... I had another show tonight. Yeah. I made another hundred bucks. Right. That's two hundred dollars in the pocket for forty minutes. Right. Oh, guess what? I got a show Tuesday, show Thursday. Right. Guess what? That's another hundred dollars in the pocket. That's four hundred, five hundred dollars a week. That's paying more than most full time jobs right now. That's that is nuts. You know what I mean? It's just willing if you're willing to do it, like. Right, but you got to have the time. You got to have the fans. You got to have the people because once you, I mean, you're selling tickets for like you're an asset. Right. You're a business. You're a business. Man. Yeah, you're really. a brand. You're a brand. Like that's what's nuts, man. It's just like people are paying for you. Like you know what I mean? Like you're selling yourself. Exactly. Like, yeah, you're selling music, you're doing this, right, but you're right. selling yourself, bro. Yeah. Like you want to people be able to... are watching. People right. are listening. Exactly. And people are buying. Or people are hating. You know what's crazy though too, bro, is like nowadays, like if you just listen to my song, I I get money for that. Like Back in the days, you, you had to actually give people cash and shit. But Hell yeah. If you just listen or to sell your shit, fucking CDs. Paid. Right. So Everybody I, got Apple Music or Spotify or YouTube. or I mean, there's this little small crowd that got SoundCloud. But, like, right. I mean, even if you don't fuck with it, bro, just share it. Right. And I dropped this one song called They Don't Even Know uh, Forever Ago. You, I'm pretty sure you listened to that shit because you swiped up on it and told me you fuck with it on Instagram. I'm sorry to cut you off, bro, but. This is like on for I guess on the online it's only thirty minutes, so we might have to stop and then like press play on another one. Oh okay, can That's you cool. do that? Oh, we should be able to. Yeah.